hello and welcome to my science tutorials in today's video we want to look at a purely inductive ac circuit before we begin if you are new to my science tutorials kindly consider subscribing and turning on the notification button so that you do not miss any of our latest tutorials on biology chemistry mathematics and physics so without further ado let's begin so when we talk about a purely inductive AC circuit, what we simply mean by this is um, we have a circuit that is solely made of an inductor. So this is our inductor connected to an AC source. So this becomes our purely inductive AC circuit. Now, the inductor is represented by the letter L to show the inductance of the inductor. Now, the, because this is a purely inductive AC circuit, the voltage from the AC source becomes our inductive voltage. So, we name this VL. And then the current passing through this circuit is what we call inductive current. So, IL. Now, what is the relationship between the inductive voltage and inductive current? Now, in a purely inductive AC circuit, the current lags the applied voltage by 90 degrees. What this means is that if we plot a graph of, or if we draw the fissile diagram for this circuit, we are going to have something that looks like this. We are going to have the current, the inductive current, IL and then the inductive voltage okay they differ from each other by an angle of 90 degrees so this is what we mean by the current lags by the applied voltage by 90 degrees this means that if we come to the circuit diagram over here on the left if the current is sorry if the voltage is going in the right direction the current is going in the opposite upward direction at an angle of 90 degrees so they are an angle of 90 degrees apart from each other now quickly let's try and draw what we call the the current or the voltage waveform for this particular a uh, purely inductive AC circuit so if we draw that we are going to get something that looks like this so we are going to plot a graph of voltage and current against time so our horizontal axis this is going to be t which is our time now because this voltage and current differ by 90 degrees it means if our current which is il start from the point zero over here it will go up because the source of voltage in this case or the source of current is an easy source it does not stay steady it goes up and down in a wave pattern so we are going to have our current going like this up and down so this is for our current now what of the voltage the voltage does the other way around so it starts all the way from let's say a little bit up here this is inductive voltage start all the way from here comes down cross up here and then go and then it continues that way this is what we call or this diagram is what we call the current and voltage diagram so this is our current and voltage diagram and voltage diagram and this diagram where we have the voltage leading the current by an angle of 90 degrees is what we call the fissile diagram the fissile diagram now that we've occupied the basics of what a purely inductive circuit is and what it contains let's look at some uh, formulas that can be used in solving problems on a purely inductive AC circuit
Now, in this type of circuit, that is the purely inductive AC circuit, the opposition to the flow of current is what we call the inductive reactance. Inductive, inductive reactance. Which is denoted by XL. Now, let me take you back to direct current. In direct current, when we have voltage and we have current, the opposition to the flow of current in a direct AC circuit is what we call the resistance, which is R. Okay, so it means using Ohm's law, we can have the relationship between the voltage, current, and then the resistance, which is equal to V is equal to IR, according to what Ohm's law. Now, in this situation where we are having an inductance, an inductor instead of we are having an inductor instead of a resistor. The opposition to the flow of current, which in direct current is what we call the resistance. In this type of circuit, that opposition to the flow of current is what we call inductive reactance. And that inductive reactant, XL, is given mathematically as the ratio of the inductive voltage to the inductive current this is also equal to 2 pi f l because this sort of reaction sorry this sort of opposition also occurs in a wave like pattern so to express the formula in a waveform we have 2 pi f l now the f is the frequency is the frequency which is measured in hertz and then the L over here is the inductance of the inductor. So the L is the inductance. Is the inductance of the inductor. Now what is the SI unit for inductive reactance? Just like resistor, it is also measured in ohms. So this formula has the unit measured in ohms. But note that the frequency it is it is in hertz, and then the inductance it is in Henry, which is what we have over here. The inductance is in Henry. So now that we've covered the basic um, explanation of what inductive reactance is, what a purely inductive AC circuit comprised of, and then the basic formula that is associated with this, let's have a look at some practical examples to actually have a feel of how to apply this formula to solve some series of questions so we want to start with the first question that we have over here so we are to calculate the reactance of a coil of inductance 0 0.3 to henry when it is connected to a 50 hertz supply that is for a b we are to they say b a coil has a reactance of 124 ohms in a circuit with a supply of frequency 5 kilohertz we have to determine the inductance of the coil so this is pretty easy and straightforward so let's go with the first question which is a so we have to calculate the reactance of a coil of inductor so we know we have to find the inductive reactance which we do not know now we have the inductance of the inductor l given to us as 0 0.32 henry in the question and we have our frequency given to us as 50 hertz over here but we know from my previous explanation that the inductive reactance is equal to 2 pi f l if that is the case we already have our l which is what we have over here and we already have our frequency which is what we have over here pi we already know the value of pi so we can straightforward substitute this l and f these values into the formula so we have 2 pi the f is 50 hertz multiplied by l which is 0 
2. So if we compute this into our calculator, we are going to get a value of 100.5 ohms as the inductive reactance for this particular question. Now let's have a look at the second part of this question. Now in the second part, we have a coal has a reactance, so which means in the second part, our reactance has been given to us, so our XL is 124 ohms. In a circuit supply of frequency, now our frequency is 5 kilohertz. We are to determine the inductance of the coal, so we don't know the value of the inductance, which is L. This is pretty easy and straightforward as usual. We know our XL is equal to 2 pi FL. Now we already have the value of frequency. We already have the value of XL. We know 2 pi. We don't know L. So we just make L the subject. So making L the subject, let me use another color for that. If we make L the subject, it means we have to divide both sides by 2 pi F. 2 pi f so it means our l which is our inductance is now equal to xl over 2 pi f now we know our xl value is 124 divided by 2 pi and then our frequency here 5 kilo okay kilo is a thousand so multiplied by 5 that is 5000 so we have 5 one two three bracket close as our five thousand so if we have the ratio of 124 divided by 2 pi multiplied by 5000 we are going to get a value of 0 0.003947 which if we approximate this um if you approximate this we are going to get roughly 3.95 milli henry as our answer for the inductance for this particular circuit so now let's have a look at another example a problem number two to actually appreciate more uh, how to use this formula so let's have a look at the second question that we have so a coal has an inductance of 40 micro henry and a negligible resistance we have to calculate the we have to calculate its inductive reactance and the resulting current if connected to a a 240 volts 50 hertz supply and b 100 volt and 1 kilohertz volt uh 1 kilohertz supply so let's have a look at how to solve this question so let's look at our parameters that we have so we have a coil of an inductance so we have l is equal to 40 milli henry and then 40 milli henry is equal to 40 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 this is minus 3 henry now the a aspect of the question is saying that we have a voltage supply of 240 volts and then we have a frequency we have a frequency of 50 hertz so the question is in twofold we are to calculate the inductive reactance and we also to calculate the resulting current so let's look at that so let me use another color let me use orange for the inductive reactance so the inductive reactance xl as we know is 2 pi f l pretty straightforward so we have 2 pi our frequency is 50 multiplied by the value of L is 40 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 bracket close so if we do the computation we are going to get the value of our inductive reactance to be equal to 12.57 ohms now if that is the case let's try and find 
our resulting current now just like ohm's law just like ohm's law where we have v is equal to ir it is still the same in this scenario the only difference here is that in place of the normal resistance over here we are having what an inductive reactance so we have v is equal to i x l that is the only difference so if this holds true then it means for us to be able to find our current our current will not be equal to if we make current the subject over here our current will not be equal to the voltage divided by the inductive reactance which will be equal to our voltage given to us is 240 divided by the calculated inductive reactants that we found was 12.57 so if we compute this into the calculator we are going to get 19.09 amperes as the value for our resulting current now let's solve the b aspect of this question so let me quickly erase this so b just like a b also has the inductance to be 40 micro henry which is equal to 40 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 like i said earlier on but this time around the voltage is 100 volts and then our frequency is 1 kilohertz now we know a kilo is 1000 so it means the frequency here is technically 1000 hertz let's take note of that so the first aspect of the question b let me make it b i is for us to calculate the inductive reactance so pretty straightforward our inductive reactance is 2 pi f l let me use a different color to distinguish that so from 2 pi f l we know that our x l is equal to 2 pi our frequency this time around is a thousand multiplied by our l which is 40 times 10 to the power minus 3 this is minus 3 so which means our inductive reactance is equal to 2 pi multiplied by a thousand multiplied by 40 to the power 40 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 3 will give us 251.3 ohms as our inductive reactance now now that we found our inductive reactance let's go on ahead and find the resulting current so from the previous example we know that the current will be equal to the voltage divided by the inductive reactance so our i which is our current is equal to the voltage in this case is 100 divided by 251.3 so our final answer for current is going to be equal to 0 0.398 amperes as the value for our resulting current. So this is how you simply use a purely inductive circuit formula to play around, do some change of subject and find whatever you are asked to calculate or find so um thank you so much for watching this is just one of the small part of our inductive or ec circuit theory as a whole there are more videos that will be coming on a purely resistive circuit a purely capacitive circuit and then a combination of these circuits together in series and in parallel so thank you so much once again for watching and i will see